The surge of distrust, that's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, 60 years ago, a man who knew a little bit about America and its military warned us about the storm clouds gathering on the horizon. We must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. Former general and outgoing president Dwight D. Eisenhower saw the looming danger of a military that had grown so large and so powerful that it risked straying far beyond its role and even risked the very values it's charged to uphold. Now, Ike would no doubt see our troops as the selfless, dedicated, and brave people that, that they are. But what would he think about how our national security establishment has ballooned and about the billions of dollars lost annually, waste, fraud, and abuse that marks the Pentagon? Now, traditionally and for good reason, our military has been one of the most trusted groups in the United States. But lately, that's been changing. In 2018, 70% of Americans reported having a great deal of confidence in the military. Three years later, it's down to 56%, with the largest dips among independents and Republicans. So why is this happening? Now, undoubtedly, are schools increasingly anti-American curricular having some effect? Then there's the entertainment industry and big tech, which are usually apologizing for America. That certainly doesn't inspire patriotism. But that's not the whole story. The fact of the matter is, Americans know that despite trillions in spending, our military leadership hasn't won a major war outright since World War II. Americans see the rise of China, and they wonder why our politicians and our generals didn't see this coming long time ago and then prepare us for the reality that's coming. Americans see heart-wrenching losses of American military and civilian personnel in Iraq, but no victory there. They know that the best equipped, most advanced military in the world couldn't defeat the Taliban in Afghanistan after 20 years. Now, I bet most do not know that we spent somewhere around $88 billion, I bet it's more, to train the Afghan military and police forces. But how many times did our military commanders appear before Congress and insist, insist, I tell you, that things are about to turn the corner there? But now that we're finally withdrawing our troops from Afghanistan, we see the cold, hard truth. None of it worked. The soldiers and airmen, the reservists, they didn't fail us. Their leadership did. Of course, former President George W. Bush believes Biden's decision to pull out of America's longest war is premature. Is it a mistake, the withdrawal? I, I, you know, I think it is, yeah. I think because I think the consequences are going to be unbelievably bad. But it's also heartbreaking, he went on to say it's heartbreaking, not only because of the suffering we leave behind, but because we should have cut our losses there years ago. Instead, more Americans died with hundreds of billions of dollars flushed down the drain. So if these trends continue, it will have a terrible effect on military recruiting and funding. Credibility will continue to wane, and the Pentagon will have about the same competency ratings as, I don't know, right now, the CDC. So think about this. China's preparing to take our ally Taiwan down and is aggressively promoting economic influence around the globe. But what keeps our top military leaders up at night? The job of the Department of Defense is to keep America safe from our enemies. But we can't do that if some of those enemies lie within our own ranks. Biden's State Department is staffed by big thinkers who've downplayed China's brutal crackdown on human rights as they decry our own track record here in the U.S. They even invited the U.N. to come in and grade their anti-racism efforts. This is completely insane. But again, they're a bunch of self-loathing idiots. They're happiest when America's down on her knees, 
begging for approval and cooperation from Europe and others. Our intelligence agencies also risk running into the same credibility buzzsaw. Remember Obama's director of national intelligence, Jim Clapper, claimed that they weren't monitoring domestic communications, and we found out they were. What I wanted to see is if you could give me a yes or no answer to the question, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. <laughs> and now, of course, using COVID as a pretext, Biden's White House is using a backdoor to get into your texts as well, text messages. Groups like the DNC are planning to engage fact checkers and work with SMS carriers about what they decide is misinformation about the vaccine. Well, given the government's routine obfuscation on the monitoring of American citizens, it shouldn't be surprising that voters don't trust assurances made by intel or military chiefs today. Because if they're not using the pandemic to justify stripping you of your freedoms, they're going to lean on the events of January 6th. Social media has become, in many ways, the key amplifier to domestic violent extremism, just as it has for malign foreign influence. The same things that attract people to it for good reasons uh, are also capable of causing all kinds of, of harms that we're entrusted with trying to protect American people against. Uh, who, who do we get to protect us from you, Christopher? He makes my skin crawl. Now, if Americans have a certain political bent start feeling unwelcome in their own country, if they're treated like potential domestic terrorists, why should they continue to support increasing the Pentagon or CIA's budgets every year? The fact that the U.S. military is teaching critical race theory at all is frankly all you need to know about how far leadership there has fallen. On the issue of critical race theory, et cetera, uh, I do think it's important, actually. Uh, for those of us in uniform to be open-minded and be widely read. And I want to understand white rage, and I'm white, and I want to understand it. Glad he clarified that he was white. Does General Milley believe that before Joe Biden became president, the military w was filled with raging KKK members? Was white rage a problem in the Army when Obama was president? And if so, why didn't Milley speak out about it back then? I don't think these generals and the intelligence bigwigs have really thought any of this through. Because once they abuse the public's trust, insult the public, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to rebuild that trust. Think about it this way. If evangelical Christians or other traditionalists just steer clear of military service because they don't want their sons or daughters to be subjected to left-wing hectoring or propaganda, or worse, just be labeled extremists because, I don't know, they don't support uh, transgenderism or something? I mean, what then? What is the military going to do then? The reason conservatives have always respected the military is because they represented a certain American tradition. They didn't come across as political. But now the left has its claws into the military, just like they had their claws into institutions of higher learning. Hollywood, go down the line. So they want to turn our military just into, I don't know, another faculty lounge somewhere. Right now, we have a national defense apparatus, the Pentagon and in intel agencies, that are spending inordinate time and resources on satisfying the wokesters on the left and too little on the real threats bearing down on the United States, mostly from China. Oh, and let's not forget that their ties to big tech and giant military contractors are a huge ongoing problem. More on that in a moment. All Republicans on the Hill need to demand that our military leadership and intel officials return to their proper roles and get out of politics. Do some soul searching because you're doing a massive amount of damage to your really important institutions. And then what happens when America faces a serious challenge to our security? What happens when we need national unity to prevail? And that's the angle.
Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.